I've been getting asked a lot recently what and where I would sell if I had to start from complete scratch again. And it's had me thinking really hard and it was a fantastic question. So I decided to go ahead and do this video today where I'm gonna share with you my top five tips and tricks for what I would do today if I was having to start a brand new Amazon business completely from scratch. Now, before we jump straight into it, if you get to the end and find that you want a bit more information or you want a higher level training, I do have my live training sessions. It's the first link down below. You can click on them, register. They're completely free. So I have a bit more time to go through with you and you have me there live face to face so that I can go through, help you out on anything that you're stuck on and go through some of these more advanced level strategies. But otherwise, let's jump straight into the video. So the first thing that you need to understand when launching a new Amazon business is that there are five different ways that you can enter a market. And the first one being sell exactly what is on Amazon, but in a new box. Now, this is definitely the lowest barrier of entry and it is super easy for you to get started and can be really handy if you are a beginner. The only problem is that because it's so easy, there's nothing stopping anyone else from coming along and doing the exact same thing to you and taking away from your revenue. So this is where if you went onto Amazon and you saw that someone was selling a yoga mat, you would go to Alibaba, find that exact same yoga mat, and then ask them if you could do it in a different box, different branding. So you're selling the exact same product as someone else, just branded slightly different. The next level up from that is to slightly tweak something that's already being sold on Amazon. So staying on a similar theme, if someone was selling just a regular yoga mat, you could go out and maybe do a yoga mat that had a strap around it that kept it all tied up. Or maybe it was a yoga mat that had a little workout that came with it or a little stretching routine. So you're still selling the exact same product as everyone else, but you're just a little bit different, a tiny little bit better. And that's sort of how you catch the eye of the customer. And then the third way, which is one of my favorites for beginners, and it's what a lot of my students are using at the moment to launch onto Amazon. And that's to find something outside of Amazon Amazon that is being sold, but it's not on Amazon yet. So what this can look like is finding something off Pinterest or off Google or someone's Shopify store. It's a product that is relatively easy to source, but nobody is selling it on Amazon yet or in that particular marketplace. So you just take it from where it's being made and you're the first one to bring it onto Amazon. This is obviously good because at the start you don't have any competition, but a lot of the time it is still relatively easy for other people to copy you. And then our fourth method is an original design, right? So something like the Scrub Daddy, okay? A lot of people have heard of the Scrub Daddy, that's an original design. There's going to be nothing else like it on the marketplace. And then that moves into the fifth way, which is getting that product patented. So if you have a product that is a brand new design, you do have the option then to patent it and launch onto Amazon with that patent. So no one else can copy that exact design that you have. So obviously you can choose any five of these strategies as a way to launch onto Amazon. But obviously as you work your way further and further up the pyramid, they become more and more sustainable and long-term of a business, but they also usually require more patience and more capital to get started. So what I would do if I was starting from scratch today is the third method, which is to find something that's already being sold or already being made off of Amazon or on a different marketplace and then bringing it onto Amazon to be the first one and only one selling it. So then the second tip or the second step in the journey would be you need to get a research tool, okay? There's no way that you can find winning products or find winning niches without a research tool for Amazon. Now, I personally use Zonguru and that is because, and as you'll soon find out, we need a tool that's going to be able to show us data for both the Australian marketplace and the American marketplace. Now, I always have so many people come to me and say like, oh, but I don't wanna spend money on a research tool because it's too expensive or I'm just starting off and I wanna save my money for when I place my order on my stock, to which I say you have two options. The first is there are heaps of different ways that you can get discounts on Zonguru now. There's heaps of different influencers on YouTube and Instagram now who all have discount links. The link down below in this description gets you 50% off your first month. 
So if you click that link, you can go on there. And for your researcher plan, you'd only need to pay $19 to get access for that first month. So that's gonna let you go on there, start looking at different products, different niches, how much money they're making. And that's all we're gonna need for getting started until we actually start selling. The second method is if you wanna keep your money that you already have for your order, you can literally get some of the free money that Webull is giving out in the moment in Australia. If you sign up using someone's link, you get six free stocks that are valued at a minimum of $6 all the way up to $200. So I literally did this the other day just to get my samples in my new samples so you sign up using someone's link and you can get a minimum of 36 us dollars which worked out for me to be 65 australian dollars so just from that you can pay for the zonguru plan for nearly three months and then if you have any friends you can get them to sign up using your weeble link and then you're both getting another six additional stocks so it's the last link i think down below you can use that sign up and then that's going to pay for your zonguru subscription as well well, but regardless, whichever way you go, you are going to need a research tool as I'm going to show you here in a moment. And just remember, we are creating a business. So you do need to spend money in order to make money. So we've now decided how we're going to enter the market and how we're going to get our research tool. And then my third tip is what I'm going to be taking and bringing onto a new market. Now for this example, and it's what I teach all the time as I believe it is the biggest opportunity in the online entrepreneurial space at the moment, which is to take products that are already selling well on the US Amazon marketplace and bring them to the Australian marketplace. Now, obviously the US marketplace is an absolute behemoth with the amount of money and turnover that they do, but Australia is growing so, so quickly at the moment. And they've been estimated to be a third of the size of the US marketplace very, very soon. So when we're looking at products that are on the US marketplace, a general guide that I go by is to then look at the Australian and you can assume that it's going to grow to a third of the revenue that they're doing in America. So based off of that, we can now move into looking at products and niches and going off the metrics that that we'd need to see in order for it to be a successful product. So the five metrics that I like to use whenever I'm looking for a new product to make sure I have them all checked off. The first being, can I sell this product for over $25? Now, don't get me wrong. There are heaps of products out there that are under $25 and I know people selling them and they're making crazy, crazy money. But for the majority of it, I always like to aim for over $25 because that means I usually am gonna have a bigger margin to put in there for when I'm spending money on ads and it's gonna have more leftover for me instead of just focusing on the turnover of the sales. I then also wanna make sure that in the Australian marketplace that there are enough people already selling with under 100 reviews. Now, I'm sure you know that in the US marketplace already, there's a heap of people selling who have thousands or even tens of thousands of reviews and if we're looking here in Australia and all of those sellers are already over here then we don't even want to try and compete with them we want to be going into a space that hasn't developed yet and none of those big sellers from the US marketplace have discovered this little opportunity and come across to dominate which then segues into the last metric that I always like to look at and that is the competition are there lots of people on there already advertising? Are they taking advantage of the video ad, the sponsored brand ad, or is that free real estate that we can then go in there and automatically take to rank above these competitors? So a good example of this, and if you've been through my channel before, you know I've used this example, and that is a pool skimmer. Now these products already do a heap of money in America, but here in Australia, we are tendencies to have really, really hot days and a lot more people have a lot of pools and we know that we get heaps and heaps of leaves in our pools. So this is definitely a niche that is going to continue to grow and we'll probably even go over the threshold of the third of the US marketplace. So when we look at it here on the American market, we can see that there's lots of products doing this one here is doing half a million a month several here doing over six figures a month 
and then we've got a couple that are around the 60 to 70,000 mark. So based off that and based off our rule, we can generally assume that the Australian marketplace is going to grow to around an average of 30,000 US dollars a month. And I honestly believe that that's being modest and that that niche is gonna continue on far past there. And so now if we look at our Australian marketplace here, we can see that it is a very bland marketplace compared to the US. A lot of just blue plain products. And the only one that's different is that little yellow one that's standing out there. We can see there's no skimmers here for the video ad and there's no one advertising on the sponsored brand, which are all really positive for us. So all I would do then is I come back here to the US marketplace and I've already picked one out that is stands out it's a little bit different here. You can see it's got the red framing and it's actually a bigger skimmer than everyone else. And they have really good branding done. So even though the images here aren't great, they have a big warranty on the product and they really show off that it's a strong product and that it's a bit bigger than everyone else. So what I would do is just model this product and then take it across to that Australian market, keeping it with the bright colors, making it a bit bigger, a bit stronger, and making it out that we have that big warranty that's gonna protect them across all the other buyers. And then the last thing I would do is to add a sort of Australian spin to it. Now, what I mean by that is the Australian cultures and the things we'd like can be very different to the Americans. A lot of the times the color schemes and the things we consider to be comfort and home can be very different to what people like in America. And sometimes there are certain phrases in the way that people look at things that we aren't as attracted to here in Australia. So for the example of this, maybe I would add a spin to it by making the branding something Australian. Like if you're making it as something bigger and something tougher, maybe it could be like a crocodile brand and maybe do it something around that with the logo or a tough Australian animal so that, you know, we see it. A lot of the times it's the dads who are buying this sort of product. So if you play it off as like that burly, tough, masculine, Australian animal or something in there with the branding, that's definitely something that's gonna to appeal to Australians that wouldn't work as well in a US marketplace. And then with that, you'd be well on your way to launching a new product into the Australian marketplace that over time is going to dominate across everyone else. So it just takes those little steps and that patience in order to think outside of the box and you're gonna get in and take this prime real estate before any of those big massive sellers can come across. Now, if you find that you want a bit more information about the steps that come afterwards, or you want a bit more advanced level training, remember we do have those live training sessions. It's the first link down below. You go in and register, they're completely free, and I get to spend a bit more time with you to help you along the journey a bit more. And you'll also see here that I've linked a playlist that has every step of the journey to launching your first product on Amazon Australia everything from finding your product to setting up your seller central account to shipping the product to Amazon, working out your packaging and your PPC and everything. So if you want a full guide on how to get that, check out that playlist that's linked there as well. But I'm so proud of you for taking this step forward and learning something that isn't taught at school or that not everyone else is able to believe is something that works. So you've done super well, continue on that journey. I believe in you. And remember, you are only one product away from living the life of your dreams. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.